the most dangerous martial arts in the world. The martial arts are a systematic tradition of combat practices used for a variety of reasons, such as self-defense, military and law enforcement applications, mental and spiritual development, entertainment, and the preservation of cultural heritage. It becomes apparent how dangerous martial arts can be, especially considering that they were created for use in battle. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at some of the most dangerous martial arts in the world and find out what makes them so dangerous. But before we do this, remember to give us a thumbs up and a quick click on our subscribe button to get more videos like this one and support Brutal TV. Thanks! But for now, let's go back to dangerous martial arts. All martial arts come with a certain amount of risk, some more dangerous than others. There are many different styles of martial arts, and they all have their strengths and weaknesses. Some styles are more suited for self-defense, while others are better for fighting competitions or street fights. When most people think of the most dangerous martial art, they may think about Bruce Lee movies. However, when we talk about the most dangerous martial art outside of the cinema, there are a lot of effective disciplines that can really hurt or potentially kill your opponent. Let's start with Kalari Peyatu. India's oldest art form, which originated in Kerala more than 3,000 years ago. It is claimed that Kalari warriors can disable or kill their opponents merely by striking the correct vital points, which consists of joints and arteries. The stances and poses are derived from the habits of eight animals, the lion, boar, cobra, elephant, tiger, horse, rooster, and buffalo. Kalari Peyatu, meaning battleground, is both a martial art and a way of life consisting of five interrelated parts, fighting, healing, yoga, astrology, and spiritual practice, none of which can exist or develop in isolation of the others. Forming an integral part of the region's socio-political system, Kalari was originally a secret fighting method of medieval Kerala's warriors caste, the Nairs, with intense training and physical discipline, armed and unarmed combat, breathing, meditation, and healing treatments. This ancient tradition is still practiced today, passed down from guru to student with its distinct style and code of ethics. To this day, Kalari masters assess whether you are worthy of learning its most lethal techniques based on your character, behavior, and intentions in order to prevent its knowledge and power from being misused. Our next discipline is Leth Wei, also known as Burmese boxing. Leth Wei is considered to be one of the most brutal martial arts in the world, as the sport is done bare knuckle with only tape and gauze to protect them while fighters are allowed to strike with their fists, elbows, knees, and feet, and headbutts are also permitted. Originating from Myanmar, Leth Wei is full contact combat sport using stand-up striking along with various clinching techniques and dates back to ancient times when martial arts was used to protect and defend Myanmar's borders. Like a lot of martial arts, it eventually turned into a spectator sport. Once the fight started, it continued until one of the participants was knocked out or could no longer continue. There was an extreme amount of bloodshed and there were no rules. Nowadays, rules and regulations exist to protect the athletes and boost the entertainment value of left way. Mouth guards and groin protectors are worn. If a knockout does not happen during the bout, then the judge declares a winner. Because athletes do not want to inflict any damage to themselves, headbutts require a great deal of technique and skill to master. The practitioners make sure they use the strongest parts of their heads to inflict as much damage as possible while also protecting themselves. Headbutts can turn a match around in the blink of an eye. This is why Lethway warriors are held in high regard and rightly feared as opponents. Headbutts are banned from most other combat sports, including mixed martial arts. We are now at the halfway mark, so just a reminder to like this video and subscribe to Brutal TV for more top quality fighting videos. Now, back to the danger zone. 
Pengkak Silat is an Indonesian martial art incorporating hundreds of styles. Roughly speaking, Silat means skill for fighting. Most styles of Silat are found in Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Southern Thailand, and Southern Philippines. While they are all slightly different styles, they all concentrate on combat application and the use of weapons. Some of the throws involved in Silat can be pretty vicious. For example, controlling your opponent's head, leaping through the air and using your body weight to yank him off his feet as your knee slams into his spinal column. Practitioners aim for vulnerable targets, such as the groin and eyes. Some styles use nerve strikes and others use their opponent's sarong. This fighting style is all about exploiting weaknesses in your enemy and incapacitating them as quickly as possible. In the areas where Silat originated, carrying a weapon, usually of the bladed variety, was a fact of life for the male population. A Silat practitioner will normally be skilled with a knife, stick, sword, staff, spear, rope, chain, whip, projectile weapons, or a combination of all. Muay Thai, also known as Thai boxing, has its roots in Thailand. This martial art is also sometimes referred to as the art of eight limbs, as it is characterized by the combined use of fists, elbows, knees, and shins. Muay Thai involves powerful arm and knee focus, which is why opponents can be injured in a gruesome manner. The elbow is one of the hardest parts of the body, making them an effective weapon for any practitioner. There are many different ways to throw an elbow. For example, sideways to the head, from the top down, reverse to the chin, flying elbow from the top down and spinning elbow. When executed properly, elbow strikes can knock out an opponent or inflict deep cuts. The art heavily relies on striking, but also includes throwing techniques, locks, and occasionally submissions. In 2014, Dennis Munson Jr., an amateur kickboxer, died of multiple blows to the head and torso in his debut fight. Needless to say, Muay Thai is a particularly dangerous martial art. Boxing is one discipline that can be highly dangerous over a period of time. Most people think that mixed martial arts is a lot more violent than boxing, but according to the experts, you're more likely to sustain serious injuries in a boxing ring than during an MMA match. This is all to do with the impact to the head and eyes. According to the Association of Neurological Surgeons, 90% of boxers will suffer a concussion at some point in their careers. When you get a concussion, your brain pushes against the side of your skull due to the impact and can bruise. Sometimes concussions are referred to as a minor illness, but they carry the potential to be dangerous leading to lasting complications. Beyond the physical damage to the head, the psychological effects can be just as bad, if not worse. For example, memory loss, impaired judgment, mental illness, Parkinson's disease, and lastly, dementia. It has been reported that the world's most famous boxer, Muhammad Ali, estimated that he had sustained 29,000 blows to the head during his career. What do you think is the most dangerous martial art? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Brutal TV for more top fighting videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.